guys, how's it going? Welcome back. A lot warmer today. Awesome. Anyway, so we're back again with the Sea Reader 3008 that was sent to me. And um, they got back to me, actually, the company that sent it to me. Um, and they gave me a link to do the update tool and to update this with. So we downloaded her and uh, did an update. Sure enough, there was one update. And uh, I tried the tool again. I'm still having the same problems. So I just got back home anyways from my, my trip to North Bay and thought, you know what, I'm going to check again for another update because updates can happen in stages. They do the first one, and then you go back, and you do it again until you get all your updates done. And that is common to happen with firmware updates especially. Um, so there actually was a second update, and this is my first time trying this with the second update installed, and we'll see what happens now. So, as per usual with this scan tool, read the instructions. Do not turn your key to on yet. Just plug the scan tool into your port. It will power up. Now, we got to turn the key and start up the engine. So now we want to do the standard run the diagnostics deal here. So we're just going to press OK. And it's going to gotta kill that radio. It's going to go and scan through all the different protocols. ISO 9141 is the protocol for my Toyota. Um, and it's the same as on my other scan tools, same protocol. Okay, so now we've got in here and we got monitor status. Mill status is, of course, off. I don't have a check engine light. DTCs in the ECU, none. Readiness completed, six. Readiness not completed. It says one. Readiness not supported, three. Okay, so there's like three features in my car that um, just aren't supported. Data stream supported, 19 items. Now, this was another problem I had even with the first firmware update. I still couldn't get into the live data stream, which you should be able to get into regardless of whether or not you have a check engine light going. So we're going to say OK. Car supported, data VIN loading. That's good. So now we want to check the data stream. Press OK. View all items. Yes. If tools OBD2 connector is connected to the vehicle's DLC, um, number two, if the engine is on, ignition is on, verify that the vehicle is OBD2 compliant. Got this same problem before. It's not looking good here. Now, I did read some online reviews on Amazon, and the majority of them, people have had no problem with this scan tool. A couple people, of course, didn't work with their car period which is understandable these things are not guaranteed to work with every single vehicle out there in fact they do tell you that you know I mean it's not gonna right so you got to know your protocol and have a list from the company on this one of the protocols to see realistically okay so let's go to battery mode engine of course is running we're at 13.9 volts which means my alternator is actually working wait until this thing actually there you go engine is on okay so hit the back button uh, let's go back to diagnose now that's actually good because usually when I did that it would rescan the car so let's see what happens this time now it's not letting me in Okay, so DTC one button. Okay, so there are no vehicle fault codes. So we hit the back button. Let's go one touch IM. So this is your IM readiness. Again, it's going to connect to the computer. Now, my other scan tools don't do this. I can just go boom, 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 right? Because it connects once and it's there. 
Now, as far as I am readiness goes, we remember we had three that weren't supported. Well, that would be air, EGR, and heated cat. Well, I don't have any of those three in this car anyways, but everything else we've got. Now, the EVAP has an X in it, which is kind of interesting, because my EVAP should be fine. Um, but apparently it's got an issue there, so let's hit back. Now that EVAP should come up in a diagnostics code. It should come up in the DTCs, but I got no check engine light. And unless it's not supporting the EVAP with this tool for my car, because even though it'll support the protocol for the car, it might not support all features, which still, I kind of like, why not with the um, data stream, right? I am readiness. This is how you go through manually to I am readiness instead of hitting one touch. And it's like wondering if the thing's even connected to an OBD2 supported car. Yet I can hit the one touch and uh, hit the back. I can hit the one touch and it goes in. Now I have both firmware updates and both main updates done. See, now we've got our list for I am and I am readiness. Okay. So let's get out of there, hit the back button. Battery, of course, we can go back into the battery engine on it knows. We're all good. Okay. Um, see if anything changed in the setup features. Unit of measure. Now I had changed it to Imperial. Let's go back to metric. Okay, so we're on metric. Record mode. Now, of course, I've got it turned on, so it should be able to record stuff. Um, you can print from this thing, too, by the way. So print your report out or whatever. Um, let's go into the DTC lookup. And, of course, that's going to work. So P, down button. Fault code not found on the database, probably because there isn't one. That was just randomly hitting buttons. Anyway, so we know this is going to work fine for that, for the lookup. Main info. Now, if you look at my software version, 1.00.002. Now, there was a 1.00.001 when the first time I did the firmware update. Now it's on a 02, so it's got two updates. And I ran it again as a third time just to check, and there was nothing else except just this, right? So you could like rewrite the same last update. Um, I'm really not getting what's going on with this thing um, as far as why it is that I can do the one touch stuff, but I can't go in manually, and I still can't get access uh, to that data stream because that data stream does not matter if your car is uh, got a DTC or not because if we go I am readiness here you know we get the it fails but we go to the one touch we're okay we go DTC we're okay we go to the to this one for reading the codes part of your DTC it, it doesn't know if the thing's even connected to a car it's like it disconnects itself or something I have no clue on what's going on here um, so what I wanted to show you, I brought my J Diag scanner out with me, which is one I did a review on uh, for a company, which a lot of you may know about. And if you don't, check out my videos in the search for J Diag, um, the JD101 scan tool. Now, this thing's had one firmware update, but I didn't even need to do the firmware update. It worked perfect with the car right from the get go. Um, but I did the firmware update anyways because hey you know if it's got one you do it now this thing please turn the ignition to on and you hit ok diagnostics now this is without the engine running I wanted to do a comparison here because there's obviously this is gonna show you that there's still something funky with this uh, C Reader 3008 especially with that data stream Now this one does take a little longer to connect because it's got a lot of protocols to go through as well, uh, more so than 
C reader, I guess. Okay, and there's my protocol. Okay, codes found none. Read codes. Stored codes. No codes are stored in the module. Okay, no big. Pending codes, of course, there won't be any either. Um, so we hit back button. Live data. Now, if you hit live data with the engine not running, it'll still scan. And it's going to give you what live data it can that's online with just your car turned on. Okay? So we turn the car on. And then we'll go back into live data. And it's going to show me my battery is at 13.822 uh, DTC underscore CNT zero fuel system OL uh, load uh, PCT percentage is 19 point, well it's jumped up to 20, 20.4. 20 uh, ECT Fahrenheit is 145. And we'll scroll down the list. Um, shift 1%, um, long FT 1%. Engine RPM is sitting at 1243. Now this one's a little slow to respond, but it will kick in. So you can see the live data actually works perfect on this scan tool. Mass airflow, um, throttle position is at 10, um, et cetera, et cetera. You know, O2 sensors. Okay, OBD S up. So we can exit there. Battery tester, DTC lookup. Okay, and then I get to pick my vehicle, of course, from the list of all the supported vehicles, and there's a ton of them in here. Okay. There's a lot of vehicles this sucker can support. There's Toyota. Start out with a P00. You just use the up and down arrow. Say, okay, there's a C, there's a 300, there's a 6. D. This code probably doesn't exist, which it actually doesn't. So, this scan tool is fine. And like I said, I didn't even have to do the firmware update on this one. So, I guess I'm going to write the company again and find out what exactly is happening here. Um because it's kind of strange that I have to go manual only to get into DTC check for checking for codes and then IM readiness to check, yet I can't go through the regular menu here, which kind of really sucks, and I have no access to the data stream, which is live data, which you just saw on this one. Live data works great on this one, but it's not doing squat here. Uh, and it should, considering this thing does support my Toyota and its protocol. So, um, I guess we're looking at a third video. Oh, man, this is horrifying. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's a problem with this scan tool. Um, it, it could be. Um, like I said, I read a bunch of online reviews on the website, on Amazon, about this one particularly. And there were a lot of good ones. There's very few bad ones out there at all. Um, you know, and there's, of course, the odd one where it didn't work with my car. Well, that's fine. It didn't work with your car. And none of these are all guaranteed. Like, this got a boatload of cars in it, too, you know. But it doesn't mean it's going to support all features. Um, but as far as live data streaming goes, if your protocol is correct, then it should support at least the majority, especially when it says it supports it already. Like you saw the menu on here where it said it supported like 19 live data streams. Okay, so that means that it does support it, but why can't I read those data streams that it does support? I still don't get that. So, I don't know. Um, 
I will once again let you guys know what's happening, but in this video you will find the link to download the software to update your scan tool. Um, and it'll take you right to the website for the download and you just, you know, wait for the page to load and then you'll see this scanner show up in a picture, which will be this one. And then you just click, you know, the update tools, DIY update tool thing. Um, just, you know, wait for the program when it does load once you uncompress it and install it and go to run it for the first time because it's going to search your tool for the serial numbers and all that other jazz it's going to ask for. Um, it'll automatically do that. So then when you're when it's ready, just click OK, do your thing, follow the prompts. Um, do not unplug this thing while it's doing an update because uh, that could possibly brick the thing. Um, so let it do its thing and then do your second update as well. There will be a second one. So when the first one's done, quit the program, unplug the scanner, plug the scanner back in rerun the program again and go after the next update. So this has had two updates now and we're still having the same problems. So I really don't know what to tell you on that one at this point. So I'm going to get a hold of the company that sent it to me and ask them, you know, like if they've got any ideas. Maybe it is possible that there's a defect in this thing somewhere. We're going to find out. Um, and the only way to really know for sure is if they send me another one and if we still have the same problem with two units, then I don't know. Uh, it's kind of weird, you know, so but anyways, um, thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed the video and you got some information and now you also have a way to update your tool if you hadn't figured it out already. And um, yeah, we'll see you soon.